time to talk about um, the three-time African champions, the Super Eagles of Nigeria. Now, they have a tax today in the opener for the 2026 World Cup qualifiers, where, of course, Super Eagles Portuguese coach, Joseph Pussiero, he has defended his choice of Francis Odinaka Uzo as the number one goalkeeper, despite calls from fans that he should be axed from the team. Now, Pussiero made his defense for Uzo, known in Uyo, during the pre-match presser on Wednesday night. According to the Super Eagles coach, Uzor would continue to man the post to build his confidence. Now, a lot are asking, oh, is the Super Eagles camp a place, a learning field for those who want to build confidence? Well, Sam would have our guest today answer that question. But Nigeria's Group C opponent, Rwanda and Zimbabwe, they played out a goalless draw in the first game of the 2026 World Cup qualifiers. That puts Nigeria in a good position as they need to beat Lesotho today to top the group. Well, albeit that the result in the game between South Africa and Benin Republic would also matter. The Super Eagles play Lesotho at the Godswill Fabio Stadium in Uyo on Wednesday, and they are huge favorites to win because um, they tie because of that um, pedigree and golf that they've got in the squad. Now, joining us in this conversation will be sports editor ACL Sport, all the way from Akwai Bomb, Nigeria, Fisayo Dairo. Thank you so much, Fisayo, for joining us on the show today. Hello, Fisayo, are you here with me? Hello, yeah. Thank you so much for joining me on the show today. Thank you for having me. All right, the Super Eagles head coach, as I did say earlier, Joseph Sierra, he said, Passport issues did not come um, Udinese goalkeeper Maduka Okoye from the games against Lesotho and Zimbabwe. That's the reason why um, Obaso Ge Amas was um, invited into the team. He says, everybody makes mistakes on the pitch and goalkeepers are not exempted. Is this enough to settle the hearts of Nigerians on the goalkeeping issues in the Super Eagles squad? Well, certainly not enough, but you know, uh, it was nothing less than expected from what a coach will do for his players. You know, sometimes you don't expect the coaches to come out and throw their players under the bus. The players are going through a lot, you know, because those mistakes are not pleasing to the eyes. And, mm. you know, Nigerians are wary of that happening you know, on a bigger scale. We, know, we all know how we feel to qualify for the World Cup. And we saw the kind of mistake Francis was all made against Ghana mm. last year. So the players, like Kenneth Omeru also said during the press conference yesterday, the players see all these things that are written about them in the press and by the fans and social media. It's not easy for them to take. So whatever Jose Pesero said yesterday, I think he was just doing the obvious. He was doing what we expected of him. But like you asked, is it enough to convince Nigerian fans or is it enough to give Nigerian fans absolute trust in these players? I don't think so. Okay. All right. Let's see if um, your conviction there, if um, Uzoho will be able to convince you enough. But the late invitation of Amas Obasoge and his sure of fitness, because a lot are talking on social media that he's so fit during the training. Um, the Super Eagles had his first training ease happened with the Super Eagles of Nigeria. Is this enough reason to show the Nigerian Football Federation what they are missing? Or maybe, in a way, encourage eager NPFL players that they can still have a chance to make it to the Super Eagles squad, Isaiah? Yeah, I, I think maybe it will be a way of encouraging NPFL players. Uh, but in fairness, we've always had home-based goalkeepers being unused substitutes for the Super Eagles in the last five years or thereabouts. So for Amasa Basogye, no doubt about that, he's been one of the best goalkeepers in the league for the past couple of seasons with Bendel Insurance. And yes, this is his first time with the national team. He doesn't even really have the records of playing for the league national team. So the feeling is not, it's gonna be a little bit awkward for him, especially being among the big guns. You know, someone like his contemporary, Ujolo Oneke, had yeah. played for the under-20 national team in times past, even before being invited to the Super Bowl. So at least mm. he has a feel of what the national team surrounding him is, you know. But not particularly so for Amas Abasogye. Having said that, if he has the quality, the quality is expected to shine out. Although I don't expect him to be in goal today against Lesotho or on Monday against Zimbabwe. 
I'm sure that is too much of a risk to take. But the fact that they have called on him, maybe it can also um, inspire many more of these players that when cases like that of Madika Okoye comes, at that time it was late mm -hmm. to send invitation to Europe. They will just come to Nigeria and pick whatever player. So if you are the one doing well, Amat Obasoge has only considered a goal in the league this season out of eight matches. He has kept seven, seven clean sheets, so but definitely is one of the best in the league, and I'm happy that he's gotten a reward for all his hard work. All right, today the Super Eagles of Nigeria will be playing in home ground, um, tough. We're in Uyo there to put a smile on the faces of um, our Kwaibamites there. But um, let's see the lineup for today. What Joseph Pasiero will be executing? He's got bulk of talent, I see, in the Super Eagles forward list. That, th that bulk of talent really worries me how Pasiero will manage them. With the absence of Victor Osime and the fact that we are playing against a developing team who are bound to churn surprises when they come against big sides like um, the three-time African champions. What are the odds today, Fisayo? How do you think um, Pasiero will execute this game against Lesotho? Well, it's, um, well I think, to be, to be fair, Lesotho is not a game that should worry us a lot. Mm. And... Um, you know, although he's, he's having some of his players absent in this particular game, the likes of Victor Osimhen, the likes of um, Samuel Chikweze, the likes of Wilfred Ndidi, mm -hmm. but like you have displayed on the screen, the team still has enough quality. Uh, I, I, I think, yes, Victor Boniface is the undoubted name that we start among the myriad of attackers we have. You know, we have players like Saiwa Wumi, we have Selechi Anacho, um, we have Umar Sajik. Um, from Spain as well, but I think Victor Boniface, especially based on what he did in the last um, set of games, um, will be starting definitely. Who joins him? Maybe I think Yana Cho might start because he's the only listed attacker um, available for the team at the moment. So I think he might want to put him on the right side the way he did when Salsome came calling to Uyo a couple of months back. And then I think Ademola Lukman. He's a favorite player for Jose Petero, and I think he'll be starting. Who partners, um, who partners Victor Boniface is what I'm not able to unravel. I'm not sure if, he want, if he's going to call on Taiwa Wuni. He has not particularly been impressed by the Nottingham Forest big man in recent times. Mm. So maybe he drafts in Kelechi Anacho to partner Boniface and then accommodate Moses Simon on the flank with Ajimola Lukman. That is left to see for me. Okay, we have Oyemichi there and um, Nathan Teller in your you know, conversation here. I didn't hear the name Nathan Teller. Now, of course, um, latest invite to the Super Eagle squad. And with what he has been doing, Bonnie Face, as you did say with Bayern Leverkusen, do you think Pasiero might give him a chance today if he can come through so we can heave a sigh of relief, especially when we do not see the likes of Victor Osime in the front list? Yeah, briefly for Teller, I, I don't think he's going to start. Mm. It will be too much of a gamble. He's joining the team for the first time. Like Pesero said yesterday, they've not even had sufficient training sessions this mm. time. So throwing in a player who has never played in Africa before, he was brought up in Europe, passing him in this kind of game, I think it will, it will be too much of a risk, especially when you have players like um, Ademola Lukman and Moses Simon in his position. So there's no need to take that risk. Hopefully, he gets to come on in the second half and make his debut and we hook him down. But for Victor Boniface, I have absolute trust in him. He has shown what he can do from Union St. Gilles in Belgium last season. In the Europa League, he was the top scorer. And to Bayer Leverkusen, he's a teammate with Stella at the moment. And they scored a number of goals and assists as well in the Bundesliga. In his first Bundesliga season, I have no doubt about it that if he starts, if he's given the nod to start, he would deliver this, the kind of goods that his namesake or semen would have delivered if he was allowed. Okay, what do you think would be the cracker today where Nigeria would have an upper hand today? Even in the midst of their injury worries, the vital players absent, the most experienced players absent in the squad. Where do you think Nigeria can nip it in the ball today against Lesotho? I think it's still the attack. You know, we are blessed with in, in enormous potential top front, mm. you know, even without the seamen, we're still having headache on who are start top front, from Boniface to Taiwa Wuni to Umar Sadiq, 
Fredmola Dukman, to Moses Simon, to Kalichiana Cho, you know, to Nathan Taylor. That attack is, is, is too strong to be stopped, I think. Mm. And, um, well, you remember we that to, um, we also do not need to concede goals. With the goalkeeping worries, with the lack of experienced mm -hmm. defenders, those we know for sure in the Super Eagles squad, even if we've got um, a lot of goal poachers, what about conceding? Well, for me, I, I don't have any problem conceding. You mm. know, we are in a good stage, you know, which means it's the point that, that counts, the point to get every game. Okay. So if we outscore all our opponents, we'll be fine. Mm. Let's assume we throw one goal to Lesotho or two goals to Lesotho and we score three goals or four goals. Yes, it will be worrying, but come on, we have three points in the bag. Mm. Why it was crucial in the last qualifying round for the World Cup was because there was a playoff round where away goals will count. Yes. But this time around, there are no away goals. It's strictly the group stage, the points you get from the group stage. Mm. If you get the most number of points, you stop the group and you go straight to the World Cup. There's no playoff after the group stage this time around. So if Lesotho comes and score a goal and score three, Fantastic. If we go to Rwanda on Monday to play Zimbabwe, they score up first, they score two goals, and we score three goals, six points in the bag. So that's why I'm less concerned. I will be worried about conceding and defending when we get to the Africa Cup of Nations in January because that's the tournament. Teams will always be casual, and teams will always be cagey. So if you concede first, you might have it, might be, you might have it rough in terms of scoring again. So at this point, at this stage of the qualifiers, my emphasis will be on scoring as many, as many goals as possible and get most especially the three points in the bag. Okay, let's put you on the spot for you to predict uh, the outcome of this game between Nigeria and Lesotho. I think I'll be going for a 3 0 win for Nigeria. Hmm, 3 0 win, will you let's see if that will play out at the end of the day? Thank you so much, Fisayo Dairo, for joining us on the show today. I will be holding you if we do not see a 3 0. If the Nigerians can see it there, of course, I'll be holding you ransom to this um, prediction. <laughs> well, thanks for having me.